Oh, welcome back from that report. In Nigeria's diverse multicultural society, diversity, equity, and inclusion, DEI have evolved beyond mere buzzwords, emerging as essential pillars for organizational success and societal progress. Nigeria's real cultural or rich cultural tapestry offers invaluable lessons on embracing DEI's transformative potential. Now, my guest, Bright UK Okwenga, is a dynamic professional wearing multiple hats as a speaker, author, digital entrepreneur, psychologist, and coach. He coaches individuals and groups, consults for companies and organizations, writes for top tier tabloids, and speaks regularly at conferences around the nation on subjects that impact human behavior, empower leaders, shape culture, and democratize prosperity. Now, renowned for his ability to ignite mental transformation using his groundbreaking hashtag Six Sense Framework, Bright is the principal consultant at Six Sense Leadership Consulting, an innovative strategy, training, and consulting company that helps individuals and organizations lead the future by catalyzing their reinvention and exponential growth. He joins me now as we look more into this DEI and how we can incorporate inclusivity in organizational structures and, of course, leadership. Many thanks for joining me on Business Insight, Bright. Thank you, Justin. Thank you. Uh, it is very, 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 very apt uh, what we are looking at because, uh, for instance, uh, Nigeria is a multicultural, multi-diverse uh, setting and uh, issues of uh, exclusion always comes to the forefront, especially uh, leadership positions, uh, workplaces, and of course organizations generally. So let's just talk about DEI specifically and mm -hmm. the inclusivity and why it is necessary to, you know, to be a thing really. Oh yeah. Um, so first and foremost, um, talking about DEI, which mm -hmm. means diversity, equity, yes. and inclusion. Diversity is uh, the presence and um, if I would say appreciation of differences within an entity, mm. whether it's a team, a group, a company, an organization, whatever yes. it is, right? And these differences exist in terms of um, age, in terms of gender, in terms of religion, in terms mm. of tribe and ethnicity, you know, I mean, j there could be different um, mm. c variations of that um, difference. And um, when we talk about equity, mm. we're talking about giving people equal access right treating them fairly giving them equal opportunities you know to fully participate mm. right and then the the last one we, we're looking at uh, is uh, inclusion mm. inclusion means you know creating a culture where everyone feels respected they mm. feel valued mm. they feel um appreciated they feel they belong right and then it's of course engages them to fully release themselves into mm. whatever it is that they are supposed to be doing so they can have full participation mm. and that's basically it is and you know when we have diverse opinions diverse perspectives one of the major things it does is that it helps us to be able to look at the same thing from different places okay. and from, from different angles and it eventually helps us to cut through the complexities of today's challenging environment whether in business in politics or in any other area as well okay, okay fine i still need to understand that still talking about understanding the dei concept or okay. uh, initiative as the case may be specifically equity because uh, a school of thought believes uh, that uh, uh, equity might be different from equality because some people try to get both of them confused because for instance uh, you can talk about uh, uh, we are equitable uh, or we are fair or in my organization we have a 50 percent uh, uh, men and 50 percent um, women but then some people might say that it, that is not um, equity because uh, uh, you have 50 percent men but then how much of the uh, men are uh, you know are uh, are really part of management uh, level mm -hmm. and how much uh, is an, in different aspects. So how do you differentiate between equity and um, equality as it is? Um, so at the core of equity, mm. which is what we would always want to focus on in, in this case, yes. is um, your ability to provide specific needs mm. or provide resources to meet specific needs, mm. right? Such that each person has their needs met. Okay. Not just that we are treating everybody, giving equity. everybody the same thing. Mm. No, it's according to what, you know, what is needed. Mm. So equity is ensuring that everyone has their needs met. Oh, so okay. So let's bring it down to the organizational culture and yeah. the workplace scenario. 
how does all of this play? How does it actually add to effectiveness and also help an organization of structure? Um, so generally, like I said earlier, when organizations have a diverse have di I mean, have a diverse team, mm. it um, helps to foster innovation. It helps to solve problems uh, because at the heart of innovation is creativity. At the heart of innovation and problem solving is creativity. Mm. And at the heart of creativity is the ability to see differently, mm. right? If we are all seeing the same thing, we will have the same problem in terms of what mm. you call uh, a blind spot, right? There are things that we might not be able to see because of our wiring mm. over time. So. It's better when you have two different people who are approaching it from two different angles. The way a man sees, mm -hmm. usually is not the way a woman sees. True. The way an elder sees is not the way a young child sees. True. The way someone who is, you know, not physically disabled, you know, is different from the way which a disabled person sees. Okay. And we must be able to recognize that for every one of these persons we've mentioned, or every of these categories, there are many other people within that same category okay. who have needs right just like the same so again when we're able to see differently it helps us to be able to you know uh, solve today's problems together and you know create tomorrow's and future together as well so at the end of the day what i'm saying basically is that uh the the more diverse a team is the more the competitive advantage that a theme a group or an organization might have. yes and to, to to put it that to put that uh, in some credible uh, with some credible statistics the evidence right the evidences evidence. right we have we have this there's, there's a statistic there's i mean there's a research mm -hmm. that teams that are more diverse right uh, that are diverse in nature would always um have 80 percent 87 percent higher productivity levels oh, really? than teams that are not because of the factor of innovation oh. right there was another Condu uh, uh, study conducted by the Boston Consulting Group, BCG, okay. that shows that we have um, teams that, I mean, executive management teams, mm. right, with um, gender diversity or diversity generally outperformed others, right, by 19% in terms of their productivity. So the, there are evidences backing the significance, mm. all right, of diversity, equity, and inclusion within organizations. Okay, let's talk about implementation, really, because uh, it's looking so very laudable, you know, because of um, the evidence and the statistic that you have mentioned. And how do we implement it? For instance, uh, are there practical steps that organizations can take? For instance, uh, I am watching at home and you're talking about DEI and I need to be very diverse and, uh, you know, inclusive, of course, while also talking about, uh, you know, equity. So what are the practical steps that I could or an organization or a leadership structure can do to infuse this DEI principle? Okay, yeah. So um, when it comes to DEI, it's, uh, it's very practical. Whether in the home, oh. in the office, in the boardroom, anywhere it is, it's, it's practical. And it's a function of leadership oh. because culture is a core leadership function. Right. And at the heart of culture is um, policy making, oh. right? And um, for leaders, I mean, leaders not only make policies, but they also model those policies, oh. right? So um, I, I give four, four practical you know, strategies for these, four A's, if I may call them. The first yeah. one is assessment. Oh. You need to assess where the gaps are right ask questions what kind of noise is emanating as a result of imbalances in diversity oh. equity and inclusion right and how exactly or what we need to do to cover those gaps right what measurable outcomes can we set what measurable goals can we set the second one is awareness right so it's one thing for people to say they want to embrace dei it's another thing for them to have the requisite training mm. right to understand what exactly it is so and you need then, to yes they need to be trained to understand it and the other side of it is that by training they also get equipped with the skills okay. right needed to implement that practically mm. the third side is the adoption mm. and that's why i talked about policy mm. you need to create the right policy that fosters inclusion in yeah. fact you know Whenever I lead a team, whenever I'm privileged to lead a team, one of the ground rules I establish is that no one is permitted to silence someone who chooses to speak up, yeah. all right? And you're not even permitted to interrupt them because everyone's idea counts, no matter how foolish 
it appears to one person, mm. it counts, right? So people have to be encouraged to speak up that way. And so there must be policies, whether policies for recruitment, policies for promotion as mm. well, right? Because when you're promoting, you want to ensure that your leadership at the end of the day is diverse and people have equal opportunities at promotion. Mm. The fourth side of it is accountability. Accountability. Yes, we have to set measurable goals in terms of our DEI initiative to track progress at the end of the day. Yeah. So being accountable will also um, entail um, reviewing what you have done yes. and then knowing how to You have to review it. progress okay. as often as possible. You mentioned um, leadership in passing, but let's talk about leadership and um, how, uh, what role it plays in driving and sustaining DEI in maybe organizations and even at the home front. Okay, oh, yeah. so like I said, at least three things. Number one, leaders are models. Mm -hmm. You can't talk about wanting to implement a policy that you are not practicing yourself. You have to practice what you preach. True. You know, when you have um, meetings, you have to encourage people to speak up. When you have to make a decision, right, you don't just let your own idea win. You know, it was Steve Jobs that said, in weak organization, it says, politics win. Mm. And when you talk about politics, you're talking about underrepresented groups. I mean, there are certain underrepresented groups that are just, you know, silenced. They're just mm. left out of the uh, pool of ideas. As well. So in, in, in weak organizations, Politics wins, Steve Jobs said. Okay. And he said, in strong organizations, the best idea wins. Mm -hmm. Right? So in, in uh, modeling DEI, the leader has to always ensure that everybody has an equal shot mm. to speak up and get heard. And they can contribute to the pool of ideas and the best idea win. The second aspect of it is the policy making, which I've already talked about. Assessment, ad um, awareness, adoption, and of course, accountability. And then the third aspect of it is advocacy. Oh. We need to be able to speak up as leaders. Okay. When we find that we are falling short, if one person is falling short of practicing DEI, we have to call them to other, right? So in one, on one side of it, it also has to do with appreciating, catching people right, to doing something right enough to appreciate them. Mm. On the other hand, it has to do with catching them doing something wrong enough mm. to correct them. Mm. So, okay, but then are there ways leaders can actually model inclusive behaviors and create um, an environment uh, you know, where every employee can actually have that fairness that we're talking about. Another thing again that comes to my mind is that when, as, in as much as you're trying to be balanced, be fair, be mm. equitable and all that, is there a point where you're being too equitable that time, it might really affect the bottom line? Mm. So, again, this is not just about promoting anybody and everybody just because oh. of their gender, just because of their age. I mean, there has to be some sense of meritocracy. Okay. Right? Mm. So we're not just like um, it has been said previously, we're not just bringing women to the table because they are women. Mm. They also have to be brought to the table because of the value that they have to offer right. at the table. The most important thing is that if the woman has the value to offer at the table, she should not be dropped simply because she is a woman. Okay. If a young person has something to offer at the table, they should not be dropped, they should not be disadvantaged mm. because of their age. So at the end of the day, it's not so much about bringing people to the table, it's about bringing people who have value mm. to the table and okay. let them be, yes, let them be given equal opportunity, mm. all right, to be at the table based on the value mm. that they have to contribute. Mm. If that is the case, right, yeah. if everyone has value to offer at the table, and they are coming from diverse backgrounds, they are coming with different skills, they are coming with different exposures, different experiences. Yeah. Yes, they can see things as differently as possible. And that, dif I mean, the, the difference, the disparity, disparity in their yeah. uh, perspectives becomes an added strength when they are actually working towards the same agenda. Yeah. You know, you know how it is when you have uh, different people with different mindsets and from different cultural perspectives, sometimes it's like um, a marriage of misfits per se. Uh -huh. How do you go around uh, tackling such um, issues like um, resistance because sometimes they will actually uh, come to the front burner and how, what are other challenges that uh, you perceive could happen in terms of um, trying to you know, implement this on DEI? All right, so um, implementing DEI is about appreciating our differences. Like I said, okay, good. diversity is about the presence of differences, but not just about the presence of it, it's also about the appreciation of it. Mm. And um, because we are humans, we are also creatures of habits. 
So by the time we bring in DEI conversations to the table like this, there will be some level of resistance due to tradition and habits that have already been formed, mm. just like when you're implementing any other culture shift, mm. right? So people need to be um, um, groomed into it. Mm. They need to be brought up. I mean, in terms of knowledge, mm -hmm. right? And that's why I talked about training much earlier. You need to speak to them about it. They are suspicious of change because they don't understand it. They need to understand it. It is that, on the, that education, right, enlightenment that overcomes certain level of um, resistance that is born out of maybe mm -hmm. ignorance, suspicion, and things like that. Mm -hmm. The other side of it is that we also need to be able to, you know, measure the progress okay. of our DEI initiatives. When we see that it is working for us, I mean, everybody chooses what works at the end okay. of the day. So again, we have to be able to show how it is working within the context of our organization, mm -hmm. our bottom line, our impact, our measurable so outcomes. These like progresses can actually be measured. Oh, yes, they can. OK, but another question that's coming to my head now, we're talking about DEI, talking about diversity, equity, and uh, inclusion specifically. Now, let's talk about people living with disability. That's yes. been some challenge at some workplaces because uh, some uh, people who are living with disability, they feel they don't get as much chances as you know those who are supposedly abled, as it were. Mm. You know, and there are talks of um, the work environment, the workflow, or even the infrastructure per se is not mm -hmm. really uh, uh, fair to the extent mm -hmm. that um, it makes me to do my job better. How do we mm -hmm. handle all of that? So the, the point is we need to recognize the potential in each and every person, which is really what leadership is about. Mm -hmm. Leadership is about recognizing potential and harnessing that potential for progress, right? We can't say that because a person is disabled in one area, then they are entirely disabled and cannot contribute. Mm -hmm. Are you guess what I'm saying? So we've had inventors who are disabled. We've had, we still have pastors who are disabled. We have professionals who are disabled and they have contributed immensely to the progress of, hu we, I mean, of humans as it were. Mm. So what I would say is this, we need to provide those who are disabled with the right tools okay. to help actualize their potentials mm. and get uh, the most in terms of their contribution. It's not so much about whether they can contribute or not, it's a question of whether we are ready to tap into that potential mm -hmm. or to give them the opportunities that they need to fulfill their potential or not. Okay, so this is really very interesting because uh, at, at the end of the day, like you said, everyone has something they can add oh, to yes. the bottom line. And, oh, yes. uh, you know, so they need to be appreciated. They need to be given uh, what is equitable for them to be able to reach that, uh, those goals. But then it's still very interesting. So what are the impacts really of um, all of this? Because um, some people would say that... Uh, uh, does it really work? Uh, how does it really affect my employees? Uh, what, how, what can we really do? Is there any essence to it? What are the impact of all of this to, on the employees? You can think about it. Um, for instance, uh, a woman who is employed within an organization oh. who you know, takes in, delivers, mm -hmm. and a company arranges for oh. uh, a daycare or a crutch or something oh. so that she can you know focus more on her work oh. while her child is well taken care of mm -hmm. do you think she would appreciate that gesture of course. oh definitely yes oh. because the company has factored the fact that this woman would need her child to be well taken care of. Okay. So again, that is one way of implementing um, the AI. Of course, I know an organization that had to, as a matter of, of uh, uh, DEI, right, mm -hmm. driving DEI practices within the organization, you know, create a crutch. Oh. Yes, they created a crutch and it has been growing ever since for their staff, right? So when people see that their needs are met within an organization, they see that they are, the organization sees them, the leaders see them. Mm. They feel valued, they feel re uh, respected, they feel appreciated, they feel like they belong there. Mm. It increases their, it boosts their morale. Okay. It boosts their motivation. Again, when people see that they have an equal shot on opportunities for progress, for advancement, that their own actions will determine their outcomes. Mm. Their own talents will determine their outcomes. Their efforts will determine their outcomes. I mean, they put in all they, they've got. Mm. But by the time they think that 
no matter what I do, mm -hmm. the fact that I am a woman, or the fact that I am young, or the fact that I'm from a particular tribe or a particular religion, yeah. I will not get what I want to get, regardless. Mm -hmm. They feel uh, there's nothing, there, there's really no need to put in the effort. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of the day, organizational morale is low. Mm -hmm. But when we practice DEI, when we implement DEI and everybody feels welcome, everybody feels accepted, they feel they belong, mm -hmm. it increases uh, the organizational morale. Aside that, it also increases uh, it's, uh, the, high, the, the retention rate. Mm. And of course, that prevents losses in terms of uh, turnover, right? And then, of course, it increases the bottom line. It also helps you to attract the right kind of talent, the top talent. Mm. Talent is universal. Okay. If, if they don't feel appreciated in a particular place because of other okay. factors, they definitely maybe move to the other places where they'll mm. be appreciated. Okay. So at the end of the day, an organization can attract and retain top talent mm. by practicing DI strategies. Okay, a final word right now as we round off. We're talking about um, DEI, we've talked about the workplace, we've talked about um, the home front. So let's talk about Nigeria generally, now leadership yeah. and all of that. Uh, how do we bring all of this home while we talk about all of the leadership crisis that we've had in the country? So how do we begin to appreciate DEI so we can actual, for, uh, actually foster progress and the national growth? Very quickly. So um, Nigeria is a diverse uh, I mean, a country of uh, diverse ethnicity, mm. and this ought to be a strength for mm. us. Unfortunately, over the years, it has become a, you know, a curse, as it were, in a, in, be, and that particularly because of the perspectives, and then particularly because of the political mm. um, drives around it, the political interests. But the point is, if we can utilize our mm. diversity, we will be better for it as a nation. Okay. Um, that said, we will need a whole lot of reorientation, a national reorientation, you know, and uh, we need to be able to see each other for what, I mean, for who we are and for what we represent, other than trying to put, you know, one down whatsoever. No, we need to begin to embrace um, what each person brings to the table so that we can forge ahead as a united front. All right, I'm also a very big thank you to you, Bright Okwinga, for joining us and sharing this wonderful insight uh, to Nigerians and, of course, people outside Nigeria because, uh, indeed, we need to show inclusivity and we need to be able to appreciate our diversity as a people. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much, Justin. All right, that's the size of the show for today. My guest has been Brad Ukwenga. He is an often transformation coach, and we've been looking at uh, DEI and, of course, how you can bring it to leadership, the workplace, and, of course, the country generally. Uh, let's keep it a date, uh, a date, same time, next time. My name is Justin Academy. Many thanks for being there. <laughs>